Good morning, y'all. We've got to stay in the spirit. We got to be close to Jesus. The days are crazy, but you know, it's it's like um when a baby's about to be born, we should be uh, filled with joy because something fantastic is about to happen. You know, Jesus is coming soon. We've been saying that for years. Even before we were born, people were saying it. Even when Jesus first died, they're saying, well, when is he going to come back? You know, tomorrow, a week, a month, a year, we want Jesus to come back. And so I am excited that there's a zeal and an enthusiasm for the return of Christ now more than ever before. I mean, definitely. I've been thinking about 9-11 a lot, reading in Isaiah. There was a, a passage and it says some city, I can't remember, you know, it's talking about all these Middle East um, countries and it mentions uh, Tarshish and, you know, um, these different areas in the Middle East. And it says um, in the scriptures in, in Isaiah, the city will be destroyed and never be rebuilt again. And I literally, as I read that, I pictured in my mind um, that memorial in New York. The Twin Towers are never going to be built again. And I thought, oh my gosh, Lord, I know that this passage is speaking to something else. But we are familiar with this idea of a city being leveled or, or a, an area being leveled and then never being rebuilt. And I thought, wow, Lord, these things are happening. You know, um, you said there would be wars and rumors of wars. There would be earthquakes. There'd be famines. There'd be, you know, uh, fighting and, and um, hardships. And we're seeing all of these things happen. And so we want to be positive in the sense of our king is coming. You know, like in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe books, Aslan's on the move. Jesus is on the move. He's doing mighty works and mighty acts. And we just need to be on, you know, Jesus's page. And I've really been thinking also about, coach, put me in. Put me in the game, coach. I'm ready. I've been training. I was born for this. I'm ready. Put me in. Put me in. And I don't want to be on the sidelines, you guys. And I know you don't either. We want to be about our father's business. So be ready. Be willing. You know, um, I've shared this before, but it bears repeating. When Isaac was little and he was totally nonverbal, uh, before he used to go on the bus, Olivia and I would walk down our street to 5th Street, which is where the bus would come because our street is a cul-de-sac. The bus wouldn't come and make, you know, the circuit on our street because that's just their rules. So if you live on a cul-de-sac, uh, school bus will not go on your street, but they'll go to the corner, which the biggest street near our house is 5th Street. So Olivia and I would walk to 5th Street where the bus would come. So we would walk to the bus stop and we would stand on the corner and then we would pray. Lord Jesus, bless Isaac today. May he have a beautiful day at school. Use him today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. For the most part, that's what I would pray. Of course, it wouldn't be the exact same words, but that was generally what I would pray with my little sweetie pie, Olivia. So one day, my inquisitive daughter says, but mommy, how can God use Isaac if Isaac doesn't talk? Good question. And I, I thought about it and I said, well, Olivia... Isaac, God can use Isaac's smile. Isaac has the biggest smile. May God use Isaac's smile today. And God can use us in any way. God can use our smile. God could use our words. God could use our hands, our feet, a phone call to somebody that's in need. We can mail a card to someone. We can share the love of Christ with someone. God can use us anyway, right? And I'll never forget that. And I'm thankful for that moment. And I'm thankful that Olivia was brave enough to ask her mommy a tough question. So here we are, 2021, in America. America's gone cuckoo crazy. Our world is still dealing with this pandemic. Lord, how can you use me? I'm just one person. How can I be used? I'm not a pastor. I don't have a church. I don't have a pulpit. I don't have a platform. How can you use me, God? God can use your smile. God can use your testimony. God can use your light. God can use your t-shirt, you know? Uh, God can use anything he wants. God can use our earth, you know, and the weather and the elements and nature. 
but oftentimes he wants to use us. So let's be ready. Let's be hyper ready. Let's be uber ready. Let's be super ready for whatever God wants to do and however God wants to use us. Amen. And so, Lord, we thank you that we feel in our bones we're living in the last days. We are so ready, Jesus, for you to return, for that trumpet to sound, and for you to call us home. And even so, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Father, I am so sad that tomorrow is my precious sister Sally Palacios' funeral service, her celebration of life. And yet, while I'm sad, I know that our sorrow will be turned to joy because so many people are going to be talking about her life and it's going to be a beautiful day of praise. And even on her announcement for this service, it says, wear bright colors. Why? Because Sally was so full of life. She was bright. Her smile, her demeanor, her laugh, her wonderful, um, contagious laugh, God. So I just pray that you would bring comfort to the Palacios family. I pray that this service would be one way that you usher in revival. That many of her loved ones, her siblings, people that knew her but didn't know you, Jesus. They would come to know you. Through Sally's death, much life would be birthed, God. And not just through Sally, but through many fathers. So many people have died of this terrible virus. It's awful and our hearts grieve and weep and mourn and we're so sad because we don't have this loved one in our lives anymore. They're gone. They breathe their last heart, heart uh, they breathe their last breath. But God, your word says that when the, your saints die, um, it says that you delight in that because they're with you now, Jesus, they're home. They hit the bullseye. They're in heaven now. So God, we have to be kingdom minded and we have to remind ourselves of the eternal perspective. And your word says um, that we cling to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And it says that you are the anchor of our soul, Lord. And we want to be like Abraham, looking unto a, a city whose builder and maker is the Lord. Jesus, you're the carpenter. You're the master craftsman. You're the builder and you are building heaven. You're building mansions and we are so excited that one day we will be in your presence forever and ever where there'll be no more sorrow no more pain no more covid no more death or disease or divorce or disability or pain or vomiting or headaches or migraines or anxiety or depression or suicide or any of those things and we'll be all gone and we'll just be in your presence with the angels singing holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come i thank you god that your word is not a fairy tale. Your word is truth. I thank you, Jesus, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. I thank you that in the volume of the book, you've come. I thank you that from Genesis to Revelation, all of your word speaks to the truth and the reality of who you are. Lord, I thank you even for that movie, The Matrix, with the red pill and the blue pill. We're free. We are originally woke. We have our mind awakened to the truth and the reality that this world is not all there is. We are going to heaven. We're going to be with our King, with our Savior, with our Creator, with our Maker. I know my life didn't just start before I was in the mother, my mother's womb. Your word says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Before you were in the womb, I knew you and I called you by name. You had a Laura Gonzalez design created in your eyes, in your mind, in your plan, before I was ever even born, Lord. You are not bound by time, God, and I thank you for that truth, Lord. And so, Jesus, I thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that you are matchless, you are the king of the world, that it doesn't matter if Governor Newsom is still the governor of the state of California, because Christ is king, and you are on the throne, and you are working. Your word says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And your word says in Colossians, in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And your word says, by him we live and move and have our being and, and through him all things were made and nothing was made that was made. In you all things consist. Every cell, every atom, every every 
created thing is here on planet earth because you designed it you're our master designer you're our elohim creator you're al elyon god most high we praise you we praise you in the valley we praise you in the mountain tops we praise you when you parted the red sea we praise you when you raised lazarus from the dead we praise you that you are in control and you know exactly what you're doing lord and you said in the last days it will be uh troubling times and there will be birth pains and contractions like when a woman is about to give a birth the labor pains that's what we're feeling contraction after contraction labor pain after labor pain and it's getting harder and stronger and worse so we are going to choose to look up for our redemption draws nigh we are eager we are excited lord and we pray please for the prodigals to come back you know them by name the college age those in their 40s in their 50s i pray for maite and jess as their as my as jess's dad ken passed away and he didn't know you i pray in his last dying breath he called out to you i don't know if he made it i don't know if he is in heaven or not because he didn't know you but I know that you're a merciful God, slow to anger, rich in love, abounding in grace, Lord. Grace upon grace upon grace you've poured out upon us. And I'm so thankful for that truth, God. I'm so thankful that I'm born again. Forgive us of all of our sins. Forgive us of worry. Forgive us of trying to figure out that all out. For your word says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts than your thoughts and my ways than your ways. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Jesus, you are real and you're coming for your bride. You are a bridegroom, decked out and handsome and beautiful to behold. Jesus, I can't wait till we could fall before your feet and kiss the scars that bled for us. Lord, help us to be kingdom minded. Give us opportunities to share your love with somebody, to pray with somebody. Father, we pray for the lost, Lord. I pray for the Harvest Crusade. Use us to usher people in, to pray for people. Your word says that, um, and Paul said, Apollos planted and I watered, but Christ brings in the increase. Help us to be seed planters, Lord. Help us to be gardeners, to plant seeds of righteousness and of love and of your grace and of the truth that you, Jesus, are alive. We don't serve a God that is buried in a tomb. We serve a God that resurrected. And we just love you and worship you, God. I pray for California. We are so bummed out that Governor Newsom is in the office still. But yet we don't have to be bummed out. Because we know that you're coming again. And we know that you allowed that. You allowed the recall election to happen. And you allowed Newsom to stay in office. Why? I have no idea. I don't know your ways, God. I do not presume to know your will. But I know that we will pray. And we will ask for revival in the state uh, Sacramento capital. There's homeless people that live there's drugs abounding. There's um, horrific things going on in the state of California, Lord Jesus. And COVID is continuing to run rapid. I pray for Edwin and Vivian. I, I pray for Edwin as he's in the hospital battling COVID, Lord Jesus. I am so tired, Father. Um, and, and you said that, that, oh, watchman of the night. I want to be a watchman on the wall, watch woman on the wall. I don't want to stop praying. So I lift up Edwin and I pray for many who are battling COVID, Jesus. Even Yasmin, she's feeling okay. She's at home, but she had COVID and she had to go to the hospital. So many have had to go to the hospital to get breathing treatments, to get oxygen, to get antibodies, God. And I thank you for medicine. And I thank you for our doctors, our nurses, our first responders. I pray for our military, God. What a day to be in the army or the Marines, Father, where... Um, if there's such confusion over our land, but your word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and repent, then you will hear from heaven, forgive our sins and heal our land. Would you bring revival in the classrooms? Would you bring revival in the courtrooms? Would you bring revival in Washington, um, the DC? Would you bring revival in California, in Idaho, in Utah, in Hawaii, in New York, in Texas, Father, from sea to shining sea, every state of our nation, I pray for revival and repentance, that we would be a nation on our knees, that men would stop looking at porn, that women would respect their husbands and would pray and would be about your business. Instead of taking selfies, we would be selfless and we would pray and we would fast and we would seek your kingdom first and your 
your righteousness. Lord, I know that these are big prayers, but I know I'm praying to a big, even bigger God. I pray for um, Shami and Eunice. I pray for Eunice's health this morning, God. You just placed him on my heart. Would you give him a sound mind and work in him, God? You are a good God. Have your way in him, Jesus. I pray for those that are wrestling with suicidal thoughts. I pray for these young kids that are cutting. I pray for churches that are empty and are on the verge of closing. I pray that you would revive hearts, that they would open their Bibles, Lord that they would read about you, Jesus, that would pray to you, Jesus. Your kingdom come, your will be done. You are our father. You haven't abandoned your children. We are not orphans on planet earth. We are children of the most high God, kings and priests, queens and prophetess. We are your kids, Lord. Please, Jesus, help us to know how to pray. Holy Spirit, Pour out your holy, your holy Spirit. Pour out more of yourself in homes, in classrooms, in homeschool classes. God, we need you. We need you desperately, Lord. We are so weak and weary and tired and grieving and mourning. Stomp out on COVID, Lord, please. Do not allow this terrible virus to take young moms and young dads and even kids are dying of it, Lord, please. I pray for my friend who just called me and said her son has COVID. He's a 10th grader at, um, in a high school in San Bernardino. Be with this young man. I pray that it would not spread to others. I pray for his healing and that you would work in his body, Jesus. You gave us immunity systems for a reason. So I just pray for this young man. I, I don't have the liberty to say his name, but you know his name, God. You know everything about him, Jesus. You know every hair on his head. I pray for the cancer fighters, God, for Tim, for Christina Wolf, Lord Jesus, for Jennifer Berry, for Regina. I thank you for little Riley, a 15-year-old boy with leukemia, that he's cancer-free, that the treatments worked, and he's alive and doing well. I praise you, God, that you are the God of the breakthroughs. You are God of Baal Perazim. By my God, I will break through. You said that through your servant, David, and you can break through. Break through all the evil, wicked things going on in California and all over the world. Break through, Jesus. We need a breakthrough. We need you to work, and we want you to show up big, Father. Please, God, save now. Hosanna in the highest. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.